uh, wanted to indicate, uh, you know, like bleed marks, and they were advised to go to publisher. So I am getting ready to send off the March postcards that I need to order. And I know in the last vlog I said I only had one person order one, but I actually had two. Someone ordered one the last night, actually a friend of mine, I was telling her about it, we were at a class together, which I'll talk about more in this vlog probably. We were, we were talking about what she had been up to, what I had been up to, and I told her about this project, and she's like, oh, I love getting stuff in the mail, so she said she was gonna order one, and she did. She actually um, ordered a six month subscription, which is really cool. So, that's exciting. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I need to add bleed and crop marks to my design because I don't want there to be a white border around the edge, so I'm watching this tutorial. I will, I think I'll link it. Um, if I don't, it is Print Bleed and Crop Marks in Affinity Designer by Rory Townsend on YouTube. And um, I'll let you know if it's any good or not, but it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. I've done this sort of thing before, but I don't know if it was in an Affinity program, or if it was like a Photoshop type thing, or maybe I just can't remember, I don't know. For whatever reason, the the knowledge that I either had doesn't apply, or I can't remember it. So yeah, I look a mess today. I was not planning on filming today, I just realized that, but now I've filmed this, so... Well, that's weird. Okay, I, this is a, another tutorial that someone posted. It's how to design a church flyer, prayer and fasting. So it's it's a tutorial for how to design a flyer, but it's like really religious, that's weird. Anyways, I'm getting distracted, I'm gonna get back to work. So, I don't know if you can see me, but that doesn't really matter. You're you're mostly supposed to just see the boy, not this washcloth I was using to clean up um, paint water I spilled. Just the boy. Maybe yesterday's grocery list. Eh, it doesn't matter. Alright, so, camera died, or the battery died, when I was talking to you yesterday. Um, so, I need did that, I can unstar that. I need to go in and star all the emails that I need to, like, specifically respond to, or at least reread. Okay, I don't need that. Right, I have one, two, three, four, five, six emails that I really need to respond to. There's more than that that I need to read, but those are the ones I know for sure I need to respond to. I was talking about that class that I started taking. So I was really worried people were going to be mean to me and tell me I was wrong. That's a big anxiety I have about learning new things and, you know, kind of pushes me away from trying new things. It's like, well, I'm trying my best and maybe things aren't working, so I should probably take some classes or do some research and learn how to do things better. But it's really hard because of that fear. And I was very grateful, like I said, that I had a friend at this class that allowed me to have a little bit more confidence than I would have if I was there by myself, even though I didn't know she was going to be there until as I was walking to the class. So, you know, that sort of thing. I'm having that issue again right now. Um, I ordered the postcards. Um, I talked about that a little bit yesterday. Um, and I was looking at the... Oh, I didn't order them. I sent I sent the order and I received the invite invoice. And I realized when I was looking at the invoice that had my order listed on it, I picked out the wrong paper. And I really double-checked everything, I thought everything was right, but I guess it wasn't. And it wouldn't be a big deal if it was just like, you know, normally I would order the 100% recycled paper, maybe I didn't this time, but it won't, you know, it's not a big deal. The only issue is this is craft paper instead of white paper. So, I can't really use those, so I'm gonna need to message them and be like, hey, can you maybe switch this? I know you haven't started working on it yet. At least I think they haven't since I haven't paid them, I wouldn't. But they're very clear in their, you know, on their website, like, this is custom work, you know, we don't, you know, once we start working on it, we're not gonna change anything, we can't, you know, give you a refund. But like I said, I don't think they start working on it, but I just, I have to ask them, and my, my anxiety is saying, oh, they're gonna be really mean to you about it, blah, 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 blah. But I can't imagine they would be, that's not very, um, good customer service skills, plus, 
like I said, I don't think they started working on it. And if they have, they're like, well, I'm sorry, we can't change it. I'll just order them again and I'll eat that lost. It's like I said, I only have two people that subscribed uh, this month for February. Um, so it's not a, it's like $8 worth of postcards. So it's not a big loss if that happens. I just will have a couple postcards that I'll need to find something to do with. Yeah. Are you leaving? You're the cute, you're the cute. You can't leave. Yeah, you're what everybody's looking at. Come on, stay. He's like, you're always frustrated when you're when I'm tr when you're trying to do that. That's my coffee. You don't need that. And now you're asking me to stay. Okay. Well, that's that. Um, I'm gonna lean over so you can see me kind of now that he's left. The other exciting thing that I have today is I noticed last night when I was checking something else in my personal email, since on my phone all my emails are fed together, I finally got an email from the person who won the custom house portrait um, that I talked about last year. I think there was, there was some sort of auction for charity in October, and they paid me for one of my... Um, basic packages of my house portrait, the 7x10 front on with no background house portrait. And the charity gave it away, like in a raffle, that was one of the prizes, and I never received any email or any contact about that, and I was like, well, you know, I'll just let it go, I can't really do anything about it. But the person emailed me last night, and they're like, here it is, I'm sorry, it was such, you know, like, five months, four months, whatever, you know, I was waiting to get the, just the right picture of this, of my childhood home. It's exciting, I'm exciting to do this, I'm looking at the picture, the reference picture they sent me right now, it's the perfect reference picture. When I ask people for reference pictures, is this is what I imagine in my mind. I'm excited to work on this, of course I won't be able to work on this until I have finished the house painting for Alternate History Studio. Um, I don't know if I've talked about that on here. It's the place that I'm going to be doing the pop-up and the live painting. I think I mentioned that. If not, I'll talk about it later. But yeah, that's not anything I need to do today. I need to respond to my emails, clean out my inbox, which wouldn't usually be a Friday thing, but this week's just kind of been all over the place, as was last week. And that's fine. That's how it is sometimes. And then I need to finish editing the February studio vlog, which means I will need to film the what I read in February segment. So that's kind of why I'm dressed nicely today. I'm wearing one of my shawls and a sweater that I really like and did my hair and stuff. I didn't do my makeup. I might, um, we'll see how much energy I have after lunch. It's like quarter after 11 now. I apparently my sleeping brain decided this morning, oh, we're going to take the phone with the alarm on it. We're going to turn the phone, the alarm off in your sleep and then shove it under the pillow. That way you, you can't, you really can't wake up. You won't hear, you know, anything. So I slept, I way overslept this morning, but that's okay. I, I must have needed it. I don't know. But it's enough of me hunched over. I'm going to try and get some work done and I will, I guess, maybe check back in later. Do you have to sit on my laptop, child? The thing was like $700. Why do you have to sit on it? I'd really appreciate it if you didn't. It's underneath the case there. You see all the Legos that I haven't built yet. Right there. And the plate from breakfast. Yeah, so. He's being helpful and orange. Okay, so I know I was talking about paying for my postcards earlier, but they were finished today too, so I was able to go pick them up. Um, I don't know if I talked about that at all, but... I'm going to try and make a reel about it if it turns out, like I filmed everything on the way there. If it turns out, oh my goodness, I'm tired. If the reel turns out well, I'll show it to you in here now. Come with me and help me pick up my new postcards from the print shop. It's kind of cold, so I am going to wear a hat. Made it myself. I got my mask and my keys and my purse, and we're ready to go. Alright, it's raining harder than I thought it was, but... Hello, I'm just... Do you need to talk to me or anything? Can I just... Alright, thank you. Alright, there's nowhere for me to set my phone, so... We're opening this. Oh, they look so good. 
success. But I only ordered five of these. Let's move the coffee. Here they are. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They gave me three extra, which is funny because I ordered five, so that would be three extra. Right? Yeah. So yeah, two, six more than I need, but that's that's okay. Um, they'll probably go into. Well, I want to keep one for myself. And then I will probably put the rest in. I want to do blind bags or like seconds bags, maybe. Here's the other side. I think these turned out really, really, really nice. I've never ordered from this anything from this place before. I've never made postcards before either, so it's exciting. I like it. I'm very excited. I need to, before it gets any darker, because it's raining really hard, I need to go film the What I Read This Month. I have phot photography lights in my alcove in the recording studio, so it should be okay in there, but I just, I want to get it done so I can finish editing the February vlog, which I'm almost done with now. Okay, that coffee is really hot. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very sweaty right now. Um, I've been running kind of all over this morning, and it is very warm in this room. But it is Monday the 6th, and I just, I don't know, need to try and get started. I created a weekly routine last week sometime. I, I've just brainstormed it. This isn't an official, like, final draft. I want to try it out this week and see how it works and if I like it. The only problem is, since I didn't follow it last week, there are a few things that'll have to shift. For example, on Tuesday, I have, that I write in the morning. I'm gonna have to swap that with Wednesday, which is doing art slash product design, because I need to have my next gouache painting of a notable trans woman from history ready for Women's History Month on Wednesday, because those go up every Wednesday. So I'll need to sw switch those this week, but that's okay. I also really need to work on the postcard for this month, so I'm going to try and fit that in today. Because I realized the other day I was doing something on Etsy, and I realized I am completely out of at least one card design and I didn't know that. So I want once a week to double check to make sure I still have everything, make sure my stock of everything is up to date. Because I have a sneaking suspicion I'm not actually out of this specific card, because I'm pretty sure I saw some in the box that I took from the market, but they're not listed online, so nobody's buying them. So, you know, once a week, make sure that's updated. I also need to, I'm gonna start a spread. I think this pen might be almost dead. I need to refill this pen and the pen I use for my like personal journaling. Start spread with repeating bills. So like when my PO box gets renewed, when um, my social media planning software gets renewed, because I've had some issues in the past where I haven't kept track of that and haven't remembered that that happens every month, every three months, once a year, whatever, and how much it costs. So then I find out that I've overdrawn my bank account, which is another thing I want to do today. I put into the schedule, check my bank account balance every Monday. So if I do overdraw, it doesn't go for two weeks or something without me noticing because they don't email you or anything. They just keep charging you money. I also need to, since it's Monday, reflect on the past week. Okay, so just finished lunch, I have a little boy here. I have a package that I want to open with you all. I'm not 100% sure why it says fragile to handle with care. It's a notebook. I mean, I suppose it could get bent as it is a soft cover notebook, but other than that, I don't know why it would say fragile. I was going to try and peel off the address label, but could not get it. So we're just gonna keep it backwards and try not to, okay. Try not to dox myself. Gosh, this little boy. It'd be a lot easier if I could lay it down on my desk. 
Yeah, he's a baby. Hello. Yes, I love you. You're a good boy. I got it open. So this is from late term 1917. Put that on the floor for now. Yep. And it is a B5 dot grid notebook. Please don't stick your tail in my juice. And I ordered this after the uh, class I took last week. I ordered it the night uh, after the class. That night after the class. And it came today and I have my next class tomorrow so it's perfect. I wanted an actual notebook to write in because I much prefer to take notes by hand than to type, which I ended up doing last week because I didn't have any sort of notebook that I wanted to use for it and I was in a hurry, so I just grabbed my laptop and headed out the door. I don't know where I put that knife. Ravioli. Oh, he's got a piece of sticker paper on his tail. I'll be right back. Got it. All right, and I see I put this back in here. All right. So, yeah, I ordered, uh, this is the biggest notebook I own, like, I think I might actually have one of these, uh, Moleskine in this size that we used to use for budgeting, but we couldn't really stick with it, so. I'd like to try it again in a different way, but I don't know what the different way would be, since clearly the way I had tried didn't work. This is a soft cover, it has one of these things, it has, it looks like, two bookmarks. And I like the late term ones. Um, I think they're the ones that do the, yeah, they do the numbered pages and they usually have a index in the front. This one has that, a blank index. And this is actually the same type of journal I use for like my personal journaling. Um, not this size, obviously. It's, it would be this size. The, I think this is an A5. But the late term 1917. Um, and I did actually get it embossed. Uh, it says Stet Studio Volume 1. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to transfer, later I'm going to transfer over the notes from the first class into here. I just wanted a big space where I could, you know, open it up and, you know, get kind of creative with how I take my notes and all that. I was really inspired. There was a woman sitting next to me that had, hers was a different type of notebook. It was completely blank, which I do like, but I like to be able to write straight. It really bothers me when my handwriting is slanted. So that's why I get the dots there, like, the least invasive, but they help me keep my handwriting straight. They, she was taking lots of notes and on a big notebook like this, so I was just, I was inspired to get a bigger notebook, try a size bigger than what I would usually use. So yeah, that's that. And now I'm going to get back to work. Do it on this one then too. I went to the post office and then I went to the Center for Creative Reuse and I want to show you what I got. This is like my favorite place to go in Pittsburgh. Um, it's just pretty great. It's like a thrift store dedicated entirely to art supplies and things that you could potentially use for creative endeavors. Sorry, I'm all out of breath. I just ran up and down the stairs a bunch. But yeah, so I like to get as much of my pride flag fabric there as possible. So I got this purple for 75 cents, this yellow that has squiggles on it that I'm now realizing look a lot like semen in some spots for 75 cents, these hula ladies for 75 cents, and these plant leaves and flowers for 75 cents, and they're all fat quarters. And then I got there's one more in here. This pink peachy 
Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's got like some selling uh, decorations on it or designs, all set for 75 cents. And I got some Scrabble tiles that are running around. I got Scrabble tiles that spell out Stet Studio. I thought that might be a fun prop for things, for pictures. And okay, so it's been a day. Um, my battery died while I was showing you what I'll show you in a minute. So I finally have a chance to refilm this. So what I was showing you when the battery died was this. It's a ceramic bowl. I got it for $5 and it says Bama on it. B-A-M-A -A 4 slash 90. So maybe it was made in April 1990. It feels like such a long time ago for some reason. And I'm like this doesn't look that old, but pottery really doesn't age, you know, for the most part, once it's, um, glazed and fired and all that. So, yeah, I got this just because I really, really love handmade pottery, whether it's very well done or very poorly done or somewhere in between. And I thought this would make a nice containment dish, I suppose, for things in my office. Just for things like washi tape or the Scrabble tiles, you know, just any little bits and bobs like that. It kind of matches my brand colors and it was just, it was just too pretty to leave behind. I also got some thread. Um, it's polyester color 207. It's Clark's. I don't know how old it is. It looks pretty old, but I did a test to make sure it was still good. Um, you can tell if thread has started to like rot or go, go bad, if it just breaks very easily, but I don't have, oh, I do have some orange thread. Oh, I thought I didn't have any orange thread, so I got some orange thread. I don't know what color I actually don't have, but it was like 25 cents, so it's not a big deal. And then we have a bunch of stuff falling over. Two picture frames. This one I like as is. I'll need to take the art out of it. The art isn't bad, but it is water stained. It's a sloth with some trees growing out of it, which is actually kind of cute. But it matches the color of the frames that I have been collecting and using in my recording studio. I want to make like an art wall, a gallery wall in there, and just in the room in general, and this frame works really perfectly. It's a dollar, which is not bad. I got this one, which doesn't exactly match, and I'm going to need to clean it a little bit. It's this like carved frame. It was probably really cheap to begin with, it looks like it was, but I'm thinking if I stain it, I have some stain down in the basement, a darker color, it might look really cool. It's kind of beat up, but it does have that like rugged secondhand aesthetic to it. So I'm not, you know, I'm not upset that it kind of beat up. It's got like a glob of glue. There we go on the front of it. So yeah, I'll need to clean it up a little bit. I might even sand it a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. It may not work. It may work. We'll see. But it, I figured it was worth trying. A fun experiment. And then the most expensive thing I've ever bought at the Center for Creative Reuse is this. This, oh geez, got a lot of moving pieces, is an easel. It's a tabletop easel. It's the brand Meaden, I think. Yes, Meaden. They use the rune, I want to say that's Manas. It's one of the Futhark runes. I think it's in the Elder Futhark and the Younger Futhark. So maybe it's Meaden. I'll have to look it up, but... They, sometimes when people use runes as English letters, they don't always follow the actual um, associated sound with it. They just go with what letter it looks like. So yeah, I've never had an easel before. I'm really excited about this. I think I may take this to the life painting session that I'll be doing in the middle of the month. Um, I might take this and use this there. We'll see. I've actually, like I said, I've never painted on an easel before this. So I'm probably, I'll probably test, test out some watercolor on it first so I can get, see if I can get the hang of it quick enough because I don't want to take something that I've never used before and then be like, oh, I'm trying something new while everyone's watching. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. And then the last thing I got is arguably the coolest and I will probably have to insert some pictures, but I got this really old, really rusty, really crusty watercolor tin from God's No When. It says Massachusetts, Springfield, Massachusetts on it, Milton, I don't know, it's in pretty bad shape. 
But I like old things, so it says the quality something sign. The quality sign, I think. And I'll show you. It, oh, I bet it's Milton Bradley. Yeah, probably Milton Bradley Company, Springfield, Massachusetts, fine watercolors. And I got this. I think it was $10, maybe. Yeah, it says Milton Bradley, Inc., Springfield, Massachusetts. And if you, I feel like I'm going to get tetanus just looking at this. Open it, maybe. It's got some very interesting looking watercolors in it. So yeah, like I said, I'll include some close-ups and you can see it, but I thought this would make a really cool decor decorative item somewhere since watercolor is my primary medium. And that's it, unless, of course, I didn't already talk about it, but I will, sh I will talk about it and I will insert pictures to show you I got a sort of, not really filing cabinet, but like a, a slot thing that I can put my art prints in because I'm rapidly running out of room for like space for them. It was only $10. Um, it's kind of grungy. It really needs to be cleaned. But I'll do that, and it's not the cutest, but it will work, and I'm excited about that. Okay, so this might be a long clip, but... Oh, man, I cannot wait until I have a better space for painting. It's kind of hard to get your my chair where I want it to be in this position, but I thought I would share with you the process of me painting my gouache portraits. And I know last year I did a... I think it was my very first art and chat with the subjects that I painted last year. I think it might have been Danielle Buntenbury and... No, I think it was Amy Stevens and Lucy Hicks Anderson, I think. But I thought I would do this today, give you a little update on everything. I have my jelly gouache here, my Hemi gouache. I have a cup of coffee. Um, I have my palettes, which I should really clean. And this is La Chevalier de Aeon, which actually is the name I've learned of an anime. Or a Japanese animated series, excuse me. <laughs> is how Wikipedia puts it. Um, an anime. And I suppose that they must at least somewhat include this character, but I, I don't know. I decided for the background I am going to do a very dark gray like a bluish gray, just because... My reference image is a very old portrait because this took place during, I think it was the Revolutionary War. But yeah, she would definitely be considered a trans woman had she been alive today. I will leave links to where you can read about her. But I just thought I'd show you how I paint my gouache portraits a little bit. This is still like a work in progress in terms of technique. I'm very new to this. This is one of the reasons I started this other than to celebrate my trans ancestors, my trans sisters, if you will. I <laughs> know that sounds really bad. We're not gonna say that again. Was to practice portraits of people in gouache. And I could do them in acrylic, or not acrylic. I mean, I could do them in acrylic, but I, I don't wanna use acrylic now. I could do them in watercolor, but honestly, I really wanted to learn to use gouache better. So that was kind of why I picked gouache that. And I remember watching some of Miriam Tilson's gouache videos a couple years ago, like, like maybe like four years ago now or five, I don't know. And I was just really inspired to learn how to do that, or at least ha learn how to do something similar to that. That is not as black as I was thinking it would be. It's more blue, but that's okay. I don't, I'm not super worried. Move this because I don't have anywhere to set my arm and I don't want to set my arm in the paint, especially since I'm wearing a new sweater that is white. And I do, before I start, I take a picture of my sketch. And last year, one thing I did do was I erased the sketch mostly lightened it before I started painting, but I decided since this is an opaque medium, I wasn't going to do that. And if a little bit of the, the sketch showed through, it didn't matter. And last year when I was doing this, I did not paint the background first. I painted it at the end, but honestly, I think doing it first is probably for the best. And I have kind of free reign with this because like I said, the the reference image I'm using for this is a sketch that is in the public domain and it is a like aligned sketch or like a kind of like an an ink sketch maybe it's like a I, I don't know enough about old art to tell you exactly what it is but it's black and white and shades of gray which is again like i said why i decided on a gray background for this to kind of call back to that but it gives me a lot of freedom in terms of color i did find a color portrait like a maybe an oil painting of this woman um, online that I can use. I mean, it didn't really give me much, but it did give me kind of an idea of at least how her skin tone was portrayed, even if it wasn't actually that color. 
but yeah, I can kind of do whatever I want with the dress. I am mixing my skin tones now, and what I start with, I'm gonna try this to do this a little differently than I did last time, because what I, I did last time is the same thing I've been doing um, this whole time I've been trying to learn how to do portraits, and it's just frustrating, and I'm wondering if there's a better way and if I can figure it out. And yes, of course, I could take classes on this, but at least for right now, I'm content to just, damn it, splatter paint on my portrait, of course. I knew this was gonna be an issue. So basically what I'm doing is I mix up the, the medium skin tone, like the main color, and I usually put that down first. And then I will lighten it, or I forget whether I lighten it or darken it first, or if there's really any pattern. I either, I wanna say I darken it first and then I lighten it. I'll take some of it and lighten it to make the highlights and darken it to make some of the shadows. Let me go from there. But this time I'm gonna make it all at once and try and make sure that I have enough of everything because that has been my biggest issue to date. And this stuff I had to rehydrate last, time. So you can see a lot of them, the binder has come out of the pigment. I hate mixing skin tones. I'm getting better at it, and it's it's one of those things that it's supremely satisfying once you get the right color, but the road to it is just miserable, at least in my experience. <laughs> oh, the whole time I'm like, I don't like this. It looks bad. I added too much of this. I added too much of that. And like I said, you probably don't want to follow my advice on this. I'm not... I'm not an expert. I'm still learning and I'm kind of just making things up as I go. But I go in with the medium color and I kind of paint that everywhere just to give like an underpainting kind of background sort of thing. Looks like it might be a little too dark. It'll dry, it should dry lighter, right? Gouache dries lighter. I kind of honestly personally like being able to see a little bit of a sketch underneath the painting if the painting is lineless, which this painting is. I thought dark velvety looking red might be nice. And the fact that this is red will contrast nicely with the background. Although I did realize what my issue probably was with the skin tone while I was doing this. I forgot the rule of start with thin layers and work up to thick. Last week when I did this, I ended up having to redo the lady's um, entire nose, give her a nose chop in the middle of it so she looked more like herself and not like a who from the live action How the Grinch Stole Christmas because her nose was too tiny. And one thing I'm finding with my style with these is that the shadows are very chunky. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually start down here. It actually doesn't look any darker. I may need to mix this darker because that doesn't, I don't know. We'll let it dry. I'll do some of them and we'll let it dry and we'll see. Very soft face. I don't want to make things too angular. I keep setting my hand in places where I think the paint is dry and it's not and I'm kind of sick of it. It has dried, it does look a lot deeper. Across her face here a little bit. I'm gonna go in along the edge of the nose. This is, it is actually the nose, I do believe. It's not shadow behind the nose. The nose itself is in shadow. The nose always is lots of complicated fun stuff, but honestly, the nose is one of those things that when you get it right, it's super satisfying. So I'm trying to look at it as an accomplishment rather than just a struggle that I don't enjoy. I want a little bit here. Some along there. I may need to mix the middle tone and the mid tone and the highlight together to get some sort of like mid highlights, I call them. There's probably a real term for that. I don't know what it is. So the sheer number of sirens I've heard while I've done this recording today is concerning. Like I said, I hope everybody's okay. And I don't really try to blend my shadows in. I let whatever blending happens naturally with the reactivation of the paint kind of take over that and I don't worry. I kind of like the chunky look. We'll see how it looks on something with this old of a style, if that makes sense, you know? Because obviously the style of the clothing, the style of the reference image is all very old because that's when the subject of the painting lived. All right, let's do some of that mid-tone highlight. I think with me talking about all this, maybe I would know a little bit about like, oh, that doesn't look good either. Ugh, we may need to just repaint over everything. We'll see. Actually, I like this as a highlight better than that. It's so cool toned. Kind of have to carve away at everything until you find what you're looking for. Trust the process. 
<sighs> I hate trusting the process sometimes. It makes me so anxious. All right, we're gonna let this dry and I think I might work on it without talking to y'all for a little bit and we'll go from there. So right now I am just adding in shadows and details to the sleeve here. And the eyes, as far as I can tell, are kind of like hazily green. They're not super any color really, which is great because it makes it so it's really hard to decide what to do. I kind of decided with the uh, with this face, I was just gonna yeah, that's not green enough. All right, we'll do this brown and then I'll add in some green over top. I tried to mix a brown and a green I have on my palette and it went this well. But yeah, what I decided to do is I was gonna finish the rest of the face and everything else and see how that looked with the skin because maybe the skin tone is okay. I just can't tell because I am not complete with other parts and whatnot. So adding the green in. And then I'm gonna mix up, I think, her hair color next. All right, I'm gonna add in the pupils now, I think, just to make her a little less scary. Okay, yeah, now that's a great hazel color now that I've got the, the pupil in there. I think I'm gonna make the hair pure white, actually. I know I was saying I wasn't gonna do that, but I think I wanna make the bonnet and the cowl, whatever it is, I wanna make that more of a different color. And I will do some color over this pure white. So it's not just a pure white marshmallow blob, but the base color I'm gonna set down is pure white. See, this is like my thought process for painting. It's mostly complaining, but the complaining helps me think things out and like learn as I go. I practically need like a shovel or, you know, a palette knife, but I don't have one of those. I need to get one. That way too far over, but you know what? I don't care. I'll go back in and add more shadows if I need to. Yeah, sometimes I don't always have the best control of my brush. That's something you practice and you learn. And I've definitely gotten better at it since I started. Yeah, I've had these paints for like four years, I think. Time is weird. Oh, that looks pretty good for now. I'm gonna go downstairs and see if my food's here. Okay, it is the 10th of... March and I am working on the March uh, postcard and I have a cup of peppermint patty hot chocolate. I don't, I think that's a good framing for you. I don't know. I'm doing my best here. Yeah, that's good. So it's not amazing, but it's not awful. I don't, I wasn't really feeling hot chocolate. I really, really wanted to go out and get some coffee from someone but that's not straight. See, this is why I don't use rulers usually because then I get fussy over lines being straight and things just, you know, being the way I want them and it never works out exactly the way I want it. So I'm gonna try and stop using a ruler now. Anyways, I wanted to go out and get myself like a latte and sit somewhere with this in my sketchbook and just work for a while. However, I have gone out of this house so many times this week and it feels like every day this week I have had some sort of errand or some sort of something going on and I've just been tired of it honestly. So I kind of promised myself that I wouldn't go anywhere today and that's fine. It's a cold dreary day. I'm in my cozy sweater. Yeah, it's just kind of, I should probably draw the person in before I go any further so I don't have to draw the their face around this, but yeah. So I thought I would talk to you all a little bit, oh Jesus, while I did this. Not so much about the process, just catching you up on things that have been going on so far this week. I talked about how my cats both had to go to the vet. Um, Ravioli's fine. We thought he might have some sort of parasite. He doesn't though. That's good. He's just being ravioli, I guess. I won't go into the details because it's, it's kind of gross. I'm not going to lie. But Cassie is actually having issues. She has a suspected UTI or maybe kidney stones or some sort of urinary tract problem. We It took us a couple days to get a sample of urine from her. She's very scared and unwilling, which, I mean, I don't blame her. And we're giving her antibiotics now, which we picked up yesterday. Things are starting to get better for her. She's still really freaked out. So I've kind of been ignoring her today, just letting her come to me if she wants to, which she hasn't. And that's okay. Hurts my feelings a bit, but I, I know that she's not doing it because she hates me or anything. She's just really scared and 
uh, like I said, I don't blame her. We had to take her to the vet twice, and she just, she is not a very brave baby, and that's okay. Her brother has been taking really good care of her, though. Ravioli has been. It's been very sweet to watch him spend time with her and snuggle her and make sure she's okay. Everybody needs a ravioli in their life. But yeah, that's where we're at. I need to finish this up soon because by this time last month I had already started promoting it. I don't usually sketch straight on paper. I usually will trace it from a... from something, usually a sketch that I did traditionally, but yeah, I just kind of, I need to open my Pinterest with my references. I decided to do it this way this time. You help in. Yeah. Please don't. Okay. Yeah. Lay down. If you're gonna sit on my thing, just sit down. Yeah, come on. Sit down. Sit down. Yeah, please sit down. If you're going to sit, please sit. Okay, so my copy of Joyce Sand's book, Sugar and Other Stories, came in the mail today. It's from, published by Silver Sprocket, and I believe it came straight from them, straight from the publisher. That's what the tape looks like anyways. So I peeled off the address label, and I'm going to do my best to cut this open without ruining the book. Put that there. Maybe... Ta-da! It's tissue paper! Put that to the side for now. I need to get to work on the wash portrait for this week. That'll be the next thing I do. But I was getting the mail and this stuff was out there, so I figured I'd open this real quick. Um, I guess this is, I think this is Silver Sprocket's like logo man. He's a little goat really cute. I like it. I'll have to stick it on one of my sketchbooks eventually. I think the one I have right now is actually technically out of base. And we have 
a bookmark. This shows artwork from a different author who's been published through Silver Sprocket, I think. And we also have another little like print and it has some information for other th um, other things on the back. It says, Golden Record is a bilingual English and Spanish poetry magazine and auto fiction chapbook lusciously written and illustrated by award-winning graphic novelist Rosemary Valero O'Connell. It is an amalgamation of words and images brought together to become more than the sum of their parts, exploring the body as the site and host of all pleasure and pain, and as its name pays homage to a collection of dispatches from life on earth. And then it gives three different books on the back. Example, so we have Seek a Treat by Elle or Ellie. And then we have Sugar and Other Stories by Joy San, which is what I have here. And then Ish by Adam D'Souza. So yeah, and I do believe this is artwork, I don't know for sure, but this artwork is definitely associated with the Golden Record um, magazine. And then we get a set of stickers that have to do with the book. So that's exciting. It's cute. It was a nice little extra. Put these in here. I don't know why, but I didn't expect the book to be this size. I don't know what size I expected it to be, but not this. I'm really excited. I've been a fan of Joyce Sand's work for a quite a while now, um, and I really just enjoy reading her comics. I've purchased a couple of her zines and her comics. But this will be the first book. I never purchased either of her art books, which I did want to. I just have never gotten around to. I don't even know if they're available anymore. But here it is. Ooh, this is pretty. It says on the back, A devoted yet amoral creature ensures a girl's blood sugar stays up. A gory ritual creates a charming woman's perfect smile. A neglected and overworked wife is slowly subsumed by violent fantasies. In this collection of short horror stories, cartoonist Joyce Sand masterfully explores the ways in which we contort and control ourselves, balancing the bloody and brutal with unexpected levity. <sighs> this is what the back looks like. I'm not yawning at the book. I'm just very tired. We had the time change last yesterday, and I'm still not over it yet. So this is what the end papers look like. And then we have the cover page, I guess. That's what that is. And let's see here, we've got this. I've read some of these already from before they were published in here. Let's see, I've read, I like to squeeze into tight places. I feel like I've read Be Like Blood, but I'm not sure. I think I've read To All the Witches I Loved Before, and I have read Too Much On Your Plate. I am almost positive. I wonder if each story starts with this. No, not necessarily. Okay. I like that this starts with a piece of her, like, traditional artwork. I think that's a really cool way to start the story. But yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to read through this. It's a nice little book, and I am super excited for Joy for being able to publish a book. It's a goal of mine. You probably know that. It's been a goal for a long time. And I'm really excited that she was able to do it as well.
Hi everybody, welcome to the end of this vlog. I know it's been a really long one, so I appreciate you hanging out with me for all of this. Um, if the camera suddenly moves, it's because my cat Ravioli is rolling around on the floor very joyously. He is happy to be involved, but he might whack the tripod. So yeah, this is our monthly um, reading wrap up, I guess is kind of what I've been calling it. I have my reading journal with me so I can look through it and see what I read and remind myself what I thought of everything. The first thing I finished in March, well hello, he's <laughs> touching my toes, he's touching my toes down there, um, was Swimming in the Monsoon Sea by Shyam Salvadurai and it is 270 pages, seven hours and eight minutes. It was published in 2005. Swimming in the Monsoon Sea, I read from the 10th of March to the 12th of March. This was a young adult coming of age novel about a boy who lives in Sri Lanka in 1980, I believe, 1980s. I think it was 1980. And he lives specifically in the capital, Colombo. And I go over this a lot in the review for the book, but 
this is not a setting I'm familiar with. I've never obviously been to Sri Lanka. Um, I don't, I haven't traveled that much or that far. And it's not a place or a time period I've read much about. I've read a few books set in the 1980s, but not many, period, let alone any in this part of the world. So that was my favorite part of this novel, was getting to see this place and time through the narrator's eyes. And the author actually lived in Sri Lanka at least part of the time, I think. I forget whether he spent summers there or he lived there full time, but he lived there himself at the age of the narrator in the book. So yes, that was my favorite part about the book. This is a sort of, like I said, coming of age story where a boy is 14 years old. It's his, I forget whether, it, it's one of his school breaks. I forget whether it's summer or winter, but I think it's winter. And he he's kind of bored and feeling a little depressed. He doesn't know what he's going to do with himself. Um, his, both of his parents have passed away. He lives with a friend of his mother, of his late mother, um, who took him in after she passed away. And he finds out that his uncle who has kind of disowned him and his mother and you know his whole family is coming is visiting in Sri Lanka and his cousin wants to meet him his uncle's son and the story is about him getting to know this cousin and you know spending time with his adoptive sisters and it's slowly about him realizing that he is gay um it also kind of ties in the play Othello he is his school is doing a acting competition, a play competition, and he wants to play Othello's wife. I forget what her name is. It's an all-boys school, so all the boys play all the roles, and he's practicing for that role, and it's just him coming to terms with who he is as himself in this place and time. And it's really sweet, it's really interesting, and I really enjoyed it. Like I said, my favorite part was learning about the setting and just being immersed in that different world. But yeah, it was a good book. I gave it three and a half out of five. And the next book I read was Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. It is 496 pages, 16 hours and 16 minutes if you're going to listen to it. And it was published in 2023. And I read this one also from the 10th of March to the 12th of March. So I was listening to Swimming in the Monsoon Sea while I was physically reading my copy of Hellbent. Now, this is a sequel to Ninth House which I read when it first came out back in 2019. I tried to peel a sticker off, didn't go well. This is the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. It has pretty end papers. I don't really care about that, but it's nice. I just picked it up because I saw it and I forgot when the sequel was coming out. I knew there was going to be one and I was very excited because I really enjoyed Ninth House. It is a dark academia genre book. It takes place on Yale's campus. And one of my favorite things about Leigh Bardugo and this world she's created is how well, not only does she weave magic into our reality, which was something I really enjoyed as a teenager when we would read like an urban fantasy type novel, but she also really shows how magic and how the occult and all of that has affected society in terms of like white supremacy and classism and racism and all of that. And I feel like that's an important thing to acknowledge because these are real societies in this world she has created. There are going to be those effects and I feel like it just adds another layer of realism to this book that wasn't there to begin with. And I gave this five out of five. I really enjoyed it. I flew through it in two days, obviously. It was just a very, I mean, it was a quick read, but that was mainly because I couldn't put it down. Would 100% um, recommend that you start with Ninth House first. It's definitely a requirement for understanding most of what goes on in Hellbent, but either way, would recommend. And then I read Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. This is actually a book that was nominated for the uh, Nobel Prize in Literature. It was a library book that I listened to as well, just like uh, Swimming in the Monsoon Sea was. I read it from the 13th of March to the 19th of March. It took me a little longer because I wasn't quite as into it as I had been in the other ones. And I can understand looking critically at this book why it won a, a Literature Nobel Prize and why it's been hailed as so important, but I didn't really enjoy this book all that much to be honest. I haven't given it a starred read yet. I've started working on the spread for it in this journal, but I haven't finished it yet. And I really don't know what to give it because I feel like saying that it's a two out of five is kind of rude almost, but I just, I didn't really enjoy it. So you might enjoy it. I can tell it's a very well-written well book. It has a lot of impact, a lot of substance, but it just wasn't for me. So there's that. The next book that I finished was Twelfth Night by Williams Shakespeare. I read the No Fear Shakespeare version. I was reading the original English of the time when it was written, plus the modern English kind of side by side, which is what the No Fear Shakespeare books do. 
Um, I would give it a solid three and a half out of five. It was funny. Um, I've read it before. I was rereading it. I am trying to write a short story modern adaptation of Twelfth Night, which I thought I would have done by now, but it's just I haven't had as much time to work on it as I thought I would, so it's still a work in progress. And then the next book I finished was The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which is by Becky Chambers. I'm looking at the little tiny piece of paper I have here cut out. It is a science fiction epic, kind of. It's the same person who wrote To Be Taught If Fortunate, which I really enjoyed at the beginning of the year. I think that's right, yep, right here. I read that back in January, and I believe I read somewhere that To Be Taught If Fortunate is supposed to be a prequel to the Wayfarer series, which um, The Long Way to the Small Angry Planet is the first of. This is about humans a lot further in the future, and they are creating wormholes in space, essentially, so that they can travel more quickly between planets who are very far apart and it has a really great interspecies crew. I very much enjoyed the world building and the creation of the aliens and how much thought was put into all of this. And Dr. Chef is my favorite. I would die for him. But I really did love all of the other characters. Not so much the scientist, I can't actually remember what his name is right now, but I found him an interesting character, even if I didn't absolutely love him. There were a few things here and there, that, like I've seen some reviews online where they're like, well, this isn't that, and that, and, you know. It's not perfect. There's this, that, and the other, and yeah, okay, it's not perfect, but it's a good book. I would definitely recommend it. I gave it a five out of five, or maybe I'll give it a four, out, four and a half. I don't know. I haven't made the spread yet. Somewhere in there, maybe I'll give it a 4.5 uh, out of five. And then the final book that I finished in this month was A Closed and Common Orbit, which is the second book in this series. And I read that from 326 to 329 and very much enjoyed that as well. I think I didn't like it quite as much as the first one in this series, but it was still really good. Oh, there goes the cat. Come here, you, because you're causing problems off screen. Come here. Okay. All right. We have ravioli here. I think he just wants some attention. Um, I thought it was really interesting how they talked about the concept of AI and respecting people, respecting sentient life. Oh, I'm covered in cat hair now. Respecting sentient life and that sort of autonomy and I don't know how to describe it other than removing the expectation that we are allowed to have power over other people and other beings just because we are perhaps, just because we're human in terms of the aliens in this space, you know, the space epic, but also just because we may be part of the ruling group, whether it's um, the amount of money we have in a class system or that we're able-bodied or, you know, if you're white or, you know, whether you're part of the ruling group, you know, you don't really have any power over other humans just because of that. And I thought that was a really interesting way that we, that she examined it. And I really liked how she tied it all up in the ending. The ending was very satisfying and I have cat hair in my nose now. So yeah, I really enjoyed A Closed and Common Orbit, would also recommend. You do not need to read these books in order, although I would recommend it, simply because you'll know a lot more about the characters if you've already read the previous books, because not all of the characters overlap in between the books, which kind of made me sad because I wanted the crew of the Wayfarer to come back, but uh, it's okay. I really did enjoy the characters in this second book and the third book, which I, fi I finished in April, but we're not going to talk about that because this is March. And then the last book I have here, because I am quickly devolving, I can tell, is Paula or Paula by Isabella Allende. I have been reading this um, for two months now. I started with the audiobook and was having a hard time understanding it and getting through it, so I decided to rent the physical copy from the library. And as you can tell, this book is not in the best shape when the librarian took it off the shelf. I put a hold in on it and had it brought to the library closest to me and he was just kind of like whoa you know you could see it in his face so i'll probably be the last person to read this book before it gets weeded it's this copy of this book is rather old and i am not very far into this book i am 39 pages in and this book is 300 and like 58 pages it looks like and i am struggling i think this might just be a little bit a bridge too far for my spanish language skills and I could stop, and if I looked up every single word that I didn't know while reading this, I would probably still be on like page four. 
So I just, I'm kind of just forcing myself to read it and be like, yeah, I might not really know what's going on, but I'm still getting exposed to the vocabulary. And I understand some of it. I understand most of it. And it's a slow process. I got an email today saying that they renewed it for me, automatically renewed it, which means I've had this book for three weeks and I've only made it 40 pages-ish. So I really need to pick up the pace. I would really like to be able to finish this book by the time I have to return it. So I'm I think I'm going to take like maybe 30 minutes every morning to just sit and read as much of this as I can. We'll see how far I get in 30 minutes if I only get through two pages, obviously. That's not gonna, you know, help much, but we'll see. So yeah, that is what I've been reading this month. It's not as much as it has been in other months, but that's fine. Reading is something I do for fun, obviously, because I enjoy it. I am looking to sort of optimize my reading and get more done each month, more read, because I, I have a huge stack of physical books that I own. I have a huge list of books I want to rent to either listen to as an audiobook or read. There are just so many books out there that I really want to read. So I am going to make an effort to try and read more just so I can consume the books that I want to consume and, you know, process them and enjoy them. So yeah, that is this vlog for this month. I know it was incredibly long. I hope you enjoyed this last little section. I've been enjoying doing reading wrap-ups and since it is the end of the first quarter, I will be sharing sometime this month in April, a flip through of my reading journal. I, it'll take a couple weeks would be my guess just because I have to finish the last couple spreads for March. So yeah, that's everything. Um, be sure to ring the bell, like, dislike this video, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, all that silliness. And thank you for spending a little bit of time with me in the Stet Studio this month. Bye.